Generators in Space Station 14 have received a pretty big rework. Generators now require fuel, at least the ones that you can more easily obtain, such as the uranium and plasma generator. They require their respective fuels. There's also infinite energy generators, but they're normally only mapped in specific places, and there's no normal way of acquiring them. Otherwise, though, science could make uranium and plasma generators, and somebody has to provide the fuel, which cargo can provide both the plasma and the uranium, but plasma is a little bit more common because you can order it, or uranium must be mined. To understand why in generators can be important, I have basically completely separated this substation from the high voltage network, meaning this substation is gaining no power. In order to see how much power it's actually being used, you can examine a medium voltage cable that is running off the substation to see its ideal consumption. So this area, and you can only see this why there's power, so if you're going into an area with no power, you're going to have to just start putting down generators if you have no other way of getting power, of course, you're going to have to put down a generator and turn it on and see what turns on and what doesn't. And you can easily identify what turns on when it doesn't is if a APC is green, that means it is fully charged. And this APC and that APC up there are on the same network. And this is the only other APC on the same network. And as you can see, the power is good right now. That's because the substation isn't dead. But... The substation, once it dies, will kill all the power in the area. Well, let's assume that you somehow manage to get access to the 15 kilowatt generator that generates infinite power. Well, as we know, in this area, it takes 16 kilowatts to keep the area running. That means the substation will keep draining. As you can see, it just lost a percent. You can change this, though, by limiting the consumption below 16 kilowatts. So if you, this hallway just isn't as, as important as security and cargo, turning this off will lower the ideal consumption to 13 kilowatts. Examine the theoretical supply. It is enough to make the substation increase. It really is basic math. And in this scenario, the consumption is below how much we're outputting, which you can examine through, again through the high voltage cable, meaning that this substation would gain power. What if we want to run everything? Well, in this scenario, it's actually really nice. The two generators that you can more easily acquire, the plasma generator and the uranium generator, the plasma generator generates 20 kilowatts, as you can see on the UI. In order to fuel a plasma generator, you must either give it raw plasma, or you need to give it plasma ore. And the fact that you can give it ore is really important, because if you, since you can give it ore, it means even without power and no access to being able to get additional supplies miners can rescue the station at least enough to get a comms console or something running by mining ores and putting it into a generator so now that we're producing 20 kilowatts i can turn this apc back on which it takes a second to get its power back up but it, it got it back up as we can see consumption is back to 16 kilowatts and our our output our theoretical supply is 20 kilowatts meaning that yes this substation is going to gain power cfc is 78 percent and as long as we keep this generator running we can keep this part of the station powered indefinitely with supplies the uranium generator is interesting because yes the materials are harder to get but they can still be gained through mining and in this case remember you could put powered uranium in to get 30 power you can get refined uranium and put it in for that or again you can get the ore which is probably the more important part because you're probably going to be powering generators when you are losing power. So having the ore in hand, especially uranium, can power a, even a pretty decent portion of a station for a long time off just a few uranium ore. Even one uranium ore would be enough to get a comms console running and call the shuttle, or enough to give access to a critically important room like cloning. There are several use cases for this generator. And on the maps that have the infinite power generators, uh, being able to actually move them around is definitely important. And if we just do a quick walk around, yes, with this 30 kilowatt input and the only 17-ish kilowatt supply, we are able to run these departments as long as we have fuel. So this guide might be a tiny little unfocused, but it does explain how to use generators and it does explain how to use the multi-tool to basically let you use these generators efficiently. Hopefully that helped and 
like I said, I don't quite understand what everything in the multi-tool means. I haven't seen anyone really use the multi-tool for anything other than the ideal consumption. Hell, I barely even see... I, I haven't really ever seen anyone actually looking at the ideal consumption. Either way, hopefully this will encourage you to use generators in the future.